The English Civil War of 1642 until 1651 pit King Charles I against the Parliament of the country, and also their supporters, Parliament supporters being known as the Roundheads, as well as the King supporters being known as the Royalists or the Cavaliers. Now, often in these battles with so much smoke and gunfire, and especially with cavalry charging around the place, it would become quite difficult to know who was who. This was, after all, before the period when we see proper regimented uniform, unless, of course, it's in a classic film or a drawing where you have the clear everyone wearing a round helmet is a roundhead fighting for parliament and everyone in a very flamboyant outfit with a nice hat and some pistols on a horse is a clear. Although of course in history this wasn't quite that simple. In many period paintings of the time we see various sashes and bands of cloth and linen being worn around the arms or the waists of various members of the fighting armies and usually we have the parliamentarians wearing a tawny or an orange colour whereas the royalists are wearing a red colour. Now I want to find out in this video, is there any historical truth to this, to the colour orange being ascribed to Parliament and the colour red being ascribed to the Royalists? Well, where this story comes from, it seems that there is actually some truth to it, at least in one instance. Now, first I'd like to take a look at this character called Robert Devereux, who was the Earl of Essex from 1591 till 1646, and he was one of the major commanders of the Parliamentarian armies, uh, especially during the start of the war. Now, an interesting point about him if you think the name looks familiar then you are right because his father of the same name was actually the Robert Devereux who was very important during the reign of Queen Elizabeth and I actually mentioned him as well as his father-in-law who was uh, Robert Dudley who was the Earl of Leicester in many of my videos about Elizabeth. Now of course his father, so the this was the third Earl of Essex, his father, the second Earl of Essex, was killed because he raised a rebellion against Queen Elizabeth in 1601, and he was killed for that because, well, you just don't do that, it's not done. But he was reinstated by the next king on the throne, who was King James, that James being the father of the king during the Civil War, Charles I. So that's how it kind of links into my earlier Tudor stuff. I thought that was quite an interesting link there. Now in 1642, after a failed attempt to capture various members of Parliament who were speaking out against King Charles, the King fled from London, which then went on to become a strong base of the Parliamentarian troops there for the rest of the war, fled north and there raised his banner calling upon troops to quell the rebels in London, this starting the English Civil War. Now Charles actually moved out from his base in Shrewsbury and moved towards London trying to stamp out the rebellion once and for all, but on the 23rd of October he was actually met by the army of parliament being led by none other than the third Earl of Essex. Now this was the first major uh, large-scale engagement of the English Civil War and it was fought at a place called Edge Hill. Now, at the Battle of Edge Hill, we are told that the men of the Earl of Essex, so the parliamentarian troops, wore sashes of the colour orange. And it seems this is the case because we have this portrait of one of the generals fighting in the Earl of Essex's army. And lo and behold, he is wearing an orange or a tawny coloured sash around his waist after having fought in the battle. Now, the reason for this would be to obviously identify yourself as someone fighting for Parliament rather than the other side, so that you would reduce friendly fire and, and such like with uh, all, sort of all sides wearing different uniforms and that kind of thing. We actually have a very interesting uh, piece of evidence here, which I've taken from a history of the Great Civil War, 1642 to 1649, by um, the historian Samuel uh, Rawson Gardner. And it reads, Captain Smith, a Catholic officer of the King's lifeguards, hearing of the loss of the standard, picked up an orange scarf from the field and threw it over his shoulders. Accompanied by one or two of his comrades similarly attired, he slipped in amongst the ranks of the enemy. Protected by his scarf, Smith succeeded in escaping hostile notice, and triumphantly laid the recovered standard at the feet of the king. Charles rewarded him with hearty thanks and knighted him on the spot. So this suggests that because he wore this orange scarf, which he picked up from the field, that this was thus a sign that he was on the side of Parliament, and so nobody challenged him as being one of the enemy, which he ultimately was when he goes back to pick up the standard. The reason he goes back for the standard is that it had been touched by the hand of the king, and so losing the regimental colours or the regimental standard was very, very bad for the regiment. It was very, it was seen as a bad omen by some who were more superstitious. Also, it was a, a loss of honour and a loss of faith on the field of battle if your standard had been taken, which is why he goes to get it back. But this is very interesting because there we have two pieces of evidence, one the portrait and then the other this story from after the battle. That suggests that the parliamentarian side were wearing orange to... Um, you know, make themselves known that they weren't the royalists during this time. Now, 
Now the question, why orange? Well, it was the Earl of Essex's colours, but I've had a look into it, and it's quite hard to find why orange was necessarily his colour. Um, also, his regiments, he had several, some foot and some cavalry. They all wore orange uniforms as well, but then it still comes back to the same question of, well, why orange? Now, one possible reason that it could be orange is because I was always told by my history teacher when I was learning uh, Tudor history that the colour uh, of one of the factions in court, the faction surrounding uh, Robert Dudley, so the Earl of Leicester, so his uh, grandfather, um, was orange, that it was the orange faction versus I think, the purple faction of, um, not Walsingham, uh, what's his name, Robert Cecil and, and, and those guys, William Cecil. And that could be one reason, but I, ha I can't find any sources to back that up. I'm not sure if he had any sources that I'm uh, that I can't find. But that would be an interesting reason. Another possible reason, and of course, is um, that he actually went to the Netherlands in 1621 and fought with Maurice von Nassau, uh, who was at that time a Stadthouder, because this was three years after the resumption of the war against the Spanish, which had happened in 1618, which was also the start of the Thirty Years' War in Europe. Um, so he had some time in the field there, but he didn't stay very long. Then possibly it's that he took the orange from the Dutch flag and obviously the Dutch colour orange, but... Again, that's a very tenuous link, and I'm not sure if we can back that up. I mean, it's possible a lot of parliamentarian supporters were quite big fans of the Dutch. They were obviously they were a republic. Uh, they were quite strongly Calvinist, uh, and they didn't really have any king. They didn't let kings interfere in their matters, things like that. So there were de there was definitely affinity between the English and the Dutch, and they were culturally quite similar at this time, the 17th century. There was a lot of back and forth between the channels. So it might be where it's from. But that's just a theory I'm positing there. So now red then is often seen as the colour of the royalists. Now one reason could be that red is sometimes seen as a rather royal colour. Obviously it's on the flag of St George, um, which was you know commonly used at the time. And it seems that the royalists often wore red sashes from certain sources that we get of the time as well, as opposed to then the parliamentarians wearing orange. We certainly see that in many portraits and paintings of the time. Although we also then get that we have lots of different coloured sashes once you start looking into it. Now I will link a website in the description below uh, where I got quite a bit of information from and, and various points about the sashes. We also seem that a lot of the parliamentarian generals wore black sashes from time to time. Now one theory that I did read was that basically the colour of the sash depended on who was commanding the army. So it would make sense the Earl of Essex's colour was orange so the army was wearing orange sash. But later on after the new model army came into being they wore blue sashes because it was commanded by Sir Thomas Fairfax and his colour was blue. That seems to work. But then we have these two generals who were both from different armies. One was fighting in the, in the north of the country while the other was fighting in the west. And they were wearing black sashes. Now it could be that the black sash, because a lot of those fighting for Parliament were in favour of a lot stricter form of Protestantism. A lot of them were very strict Puritans actually, as we see when Oliver Cromwell came to power uh, following the English Civil War and, and when briefly there was an English Commonwealth, uh, an English Republic. Uh, until Charles II came back uh, when he was crowned again. So it could be that this black colour is often associated with Puritans. Obviously, they're very strict, very simple, uh, plain colours. So that might be why they were wearing black, but that's just a theory I've thrown together there. Um, again, the English Civil War is a very interesting period, and there are so many different coloured uniforms that are worn during this time. These are just a few of the little bots that I've made of various units. Um, so really, the answer about sashes is it would be lovely if it was nice and simple that Parliament wore orange and the, uh, the Royalists wore red, but we get a lot of different examples, and even just googling some English Civil War portraits of generals, you can see them wearing all sorts of colours and sashes. So I think it's quite a, an, an interesting topic, this. I thought I'd make a little video about it. And uh, do let me know what you guys think in the description in the description i've done it again in the comments below so thanks everyone for watching if you'd like any more videos on the 17th century uh, both english and dutch history i'm planning to do a little bit more um as well as some stuff on the english civil war because i, I think it's uh, very very poorly covered on youtube and in other areas as well um and it's such an interesting topic at least i i feel it is i read a great series of books uh, on the English Civil War, actually, which by Giles Christian, which I always highly recommend, uh, on about two brothers, one fighting on one side and one on the other, so you get kind of both perspectives, which is very interesting. But uh, thanks very much for watching. I've been History with Hilbert, and don't forget to tune in again for my next video. Hit the little bell icon if you want to stay updated, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.